What's up guys, Sean here with Briar Home Buyers. Are you a first time home seller? And are you overwhelmed with the process of just getting your first house ready to sell? Uh, if you're not used to selling a house or the whole process of listing it, uh, having people come in, making repairs, etc., uh, it can get pretty overwhelming. A lot of people don't know what they're getting themselves into. So this video will go through seven things that you need to do to sell your house quickly, efficiently, and for the most money, which is what you guys hopefully want. So the first thing is know your selling options. There's three main ways that you can sell your house. You can sell with a realtor. So you go list it, they post it on the multiple listing service or the MLS. And that is the largest cash or not cash buyer. That's the largest buyer's database. The most people see it and all they're going to do is show your property to people who reach out and are interested in your house. Uh, for people who have homes that don't need a lot of work and they're not in a rush to sell and they can wait and get the maximum offer, that's the route to go. So if that's you, great. You're in a good spot and you should probably list with a realtor. There's another one which is selling your house for sale by owner. Typically these people, they want the convenience of being able to show the house when they want to. Uh, they can field or vet people who are calling to inquire about the house and tell them no if they're not interested in selling to them. Uh, typically what they'll do is not fix up the home themselves. They will just let people come in and buy it as is, but they're going to wait the longest amount of time and try to get the most money that they can out of it and sell it as is. So the third option is selling to an investor. And the investor is probably the quickest way to sell your house and they will come in and buy the house as is. So if you have a house that is needs a little bit of work, needs some love, uh, you don't have the money to make those repairs, which it can get expensive, that may be your best option. If you have tax delinquencies, if you're going into foreclosure, if you've inherited the house, if you have two mortgages, uh, if you can't pay for the mortgage, these are good options for you to go sell your house to an investor who specializes in, in taking care of those problems. So that's option number one, or thing number one to get ready to sell your house. Know your options. Number two is getting your house ready. So depending on the option that you're gonna go with, determines what kind of work you need to do to your house. If you're going with an investor, you don't need to do that much work. You simply reach out to multiple investors, have them come look at your house, and they will give you offers. And make sure that you're not only looking at the price, you're looking at the terms, because the terms of the contract and how they buy the house is pretty important. So be sure to look at that. We have other blog posts that look into that kind of stuff. So if you're going to get your house ready to sell and list with a realtor, what you want to do is you want to make repairs to the house and clean the house up, stage it potentially and have people come in. So you don't know really what you need to repair. So our advice is to go get three different realtors, have them come in and tell you what repairs that they would recommend for you to make to your house. And I know that you may have your brother's wife as a realtor. Even if that's the case, go get two other realtors' opinions. Because just because that's your family member doesn't mean they're the best realtor for you. So be aware of that. Uh, the third thing is to know your market conditions. So if you bought a house for $100,000 and in the last five years the market's gone up, you want to know how much more is my house potentially worth? And on the flip side, if the market's crashing, you want to know how much less is my house worth? You don't want to be shocked in a bad or actually a good way would be good to be shocked. So that leads us into number four, which is price your house correctly. If your house is now worth $200,000 as is, meaning the current condition that's in, the way the kitchen is, if it's five years old, 10 years old, one year old, the bathroom, same thing. 
similar homes in your neighborhood, you want to look up how much they're selling for. That means go look at houses that have the same kitchen, same bathroom, styles, and updates. And then look at your bedroom count, your bathroom count, and your square footage and see in the last six months what those houses are selling for. So if those houses are selling for $200,000, you don't want to go list your house for $250,000 because your house will just sell on the market with the realtor for months and it may never sell. You just have to cancel your contract with the realtor and eventually go down to the $200,000 and potentially lower because when you keep dropping your price, people think that something's wrong with your house and you don't want that. So price it correctly the first time and make sure that you are going to sell quickly and efficiently. So the other ones we have is understanding your cost. That plays back into getting three realtors opinions and getting a list of all the repairs that you need to make to bring your house up to a good quality condition to list and sell in the market. And now that you have that list, you can go find three different contractors and have them quote the price it would cost them to make those repairs to your home. And the reason you want three different opinions on each of these scenarios is you want to take the average. So you want to see if a contractor comes in and let's say in reality you need to spend 15 grand. If you have a contractor come in and say, hey, this is going to cost you $7,000, you may think that's great, but in reality, if they're going to do a lot of shortcuts, it's going to be a crappy job. On the flip side, if you have a contractor come in who's flush with work, they're going to say, yeah, this is really going to cost you about twenty five grand," And you're going to get the same quality work. They just have so much work that they don't need your business, and they're just going to upcharge you for that reason. So you want to figure out the average of those, which would be around 15 grand. And then you find the contractor who does good quality work for a fair price, which is hard to find, but that's why you get multiple opinions. And then you figure out how much your repairs and cleaning up your house is going to cost. And that leads us into our last one is to work with professionals. You don't want to work with bad realtors bad contractors or bad investors if you're going to go that route. You want to work with professional people because anybody who is a realtor can just list your house, not have a good promotional campaign to market your house and get it in front of the most people and sell it. You don't want somebody who just posts it on the MLS and then walks away and only answers calls when they come in if they even answer those calls because they're probably not that motivated to sell your house. And it seems like a stupid thing to say, but a lot of people aren't that motivated. Um, you also want to make sure that your contractors are good. Don't take the cheap contractor, even though it seems like a good thing to do at the time. Because if you take a cheap contractor and they do a ter terrible job, horrible, terrible job, that's going to come up in the inspection. So you may spend that $7,000 and the inspection comes back and says that you didn't pull a permit or you did this incorrectly and now they're going to make you redo it. So now you go have to spend the $15,000 and now you've spent the $23,000. So do it right the first time. Get a good quality contractor and do one, have a good contract with them. So if you're going to go with a professional investor, field them because there's a lot of investors out there who just came out of a house flipping seminar and they call themselves investors. And quite frankly, if you're in a troublesome situation, that's bad news for you because they will not be able to perform and purchase your house. So definitely check out their Google reviews, check out their About Us page, call them, have them come to your house and just talk to them. If they seem knowledgeable, good, vet them and make sure they really are investors and that they really can buy your house. This is very important, guys. Work with professionals. So if you think you're interested in getting an offer on your house, just fill out the form below on our website, on the blog, and we'll reach out to you and we'll set up an appointment. Thanks, guys.